Are you living your best life right now? And if not, why not? What fear is holding you back? You know, I want to read you a little something that really touched my life. It's meant a lot to me and it, it kind of inspires me when I'm just not doing my best, when I'm not giving my best in life. And it's from Marian Williamson. And so she wrote this poem, I guess you would call it, called Our Deepest Fear. And here it goes. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. How odd is that? We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. Now I'm going to skip down a little bit on this poem. And the last part says, and, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And we've liberated and we're liberated from our own fear. So I want to read that part again. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. Just our presence, when we're in that right space, liberates others. So, you know, I, you just, just ask yourself, you know, what is it that is holding me back? What is it I've been wanting to do? Maybe perhaps say to someone that, you know, perhaps you haven't said, maybe something you've been wanting to do and you're not, you're not doing it. Something keeps holding you back. Think about it for a minute. What do you think that something is? What is the thought? See, it's going to be a thought. That's what I've been learning, this wonderful bunch of different authors, actually, but one in particular lately, this Aaron Doty, I've been taking a class and really honed in on that, that a lot of the things that are stopping us are these underlying current thoughts that are so behind the scenes. They run the show. That's what you call unconscious. They're unconscious because you're not, they're not in your awareness up front in your daily awareness right at, you know, in front of you. It's behind the scenes running the show. And those fears usually come from something that happened when you were a kid. And now this may not be new for, so for some of you, but just think about it for a minute, though. Just think about it one more time. So when you were a kid, let's just say that mom and dad got married when you were really, really young. And uh, let's just say that they fought a lot and they left you with babysitters a lot and left you alone a lot. And, and you ended up thinking they rejected me. They've abandoned me. Um, I'm, I'm staying over for weeks at grandma's house and they don't even care. And, and you think I'm rejected. I'm not worthy. And, and oddly as little children, we're thinking this stuff and we come up with these ideas because we don't know better we can't consciously you know we can't think things through and reason it out and see that mom and dad are too young to have babies we don't think like that but we come up with these conclusions these ideas or maybe we hear things like we hear somebody say you know, well you know um angela's just kind of slow and she's just kind of stupid and she you know she's can maybe borders on dumb and hey you know i had dyslexia i didn't even know it but anyway i struggled in school but was I stupid or dumb? No. But then what happened was, of course, this is how it goes, right? Dad had, tries to help me with my homework and math in my third grade, my fractions. And I'm just not getting it. And my dad finally just gives up and he says, I, I can't help you. And he just gets me off of his lap, you know, off of his chair. And then he goes in the other room and I'm just devastated. Like now I know. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. And I already think I'm not worthy of their love because of what happened when I was a kid. And so, you know what? These things run everything and they make you feel like I should just shrink in the background. And 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 then maybe religion even comes into it. Like th thoughts like children are to be seen and not heard, which makes you feel in case you've been taught this too, that your opinion doesn't matter and that you don't matter. And so we have these belief systems that, you know, well, you know, I'm just going to shrink in the background and, you know, in my church too, women are nothing. They should be seen and not heard as well as the children. So we shrink and we just stay in the background and we don't, we don't think we're, we're worthy to step out and be what we're here and meant to be and do.
And we don't feel worthy to speak up to someone saying what hurts and what's wrong and, and speak to it flat out because our voices are, are just clogged up choking we can't say it because i'm not worthy to ask such questions especially towards a man i i should be humble before men this is the way that i was brought up that we have our reasons okay i don't know what yours are but what clogs your throat up what keeps you from putting forth and saying that thing you've been wanting to say to your dad to your mom to your friend to whoever hurt you or to um a boss that you want to raise from i don't know what it is what keeps you back from taking that next step, what is it? See, for many of us, it's we're unworthy and we're fearful or or I'm not enough or I'm a loser or whatever these kind of thoughts are that you came up with or that maybe someone said, but you have to ask yourself, is what they said the truth? I, am I stupid? Um, am I dumb? Am I not worthy? Who said I'm not worthy? Why did they say that? Look, if your parents or were not, were not feeling worthy, because of the way they were raised, the way they they were treated, they're going to pass it on to you. It's just going to be, but again, is it true? Well, of course, you, you, you know in the heart of who you are that it's not, but that's the stuff that we have to, we have to analyze it and we got to start chipping it out and we got to stop, start to question it when those thoughts come up. We have to start noticing the thoughts that are coming in our head. And these are the kind of things that, that we have to do. It's work, but I'm going to tell you what, um, you are never too old to change. Unfortunately, my parents um, are feeling like, well, you know, it's too late for me. You know, they, they never stepped up to the plate and said, I'm going to be, I'm going to be who I was meant to be. They shrunk back because of their upbringing, because of their religious abuse, I'm going to say, and they never stepped up to, up to the plate. So are we going to carry on the family way or are we going to step up to the plate and say, I'm not going to carry on the family way of doing things and seeing things and feeling and, and shrinking back and shriveling and being this invincible nothingness that no one notices. I'm not in any trouble. I just stay in the background and I serve others behind the scenes and I'm not really worthy to be that person. I'm not going to step up because no, not me. I'm, I, I'm not that person. Bullshit. I'm just going to say it right now. Bullshit. That is not true. My parents could still, they're not dead yet, are they? They could still step up to the plate. And I'm going to tell you a story of this guy. He was 80 year old man and he was hated by his family very much. So um, he just made a man. He was a crotchety old man. And when he was 80 years old, something went off in his head and ding, he realized, you know what? I'm a son of a bitch and no one loves me in my family. And they, they couldn't care less whether I lived or I died. So he changed it. He changed it up and he started making some different choices and he decided to, hmm, I'm going to invite my grandson to go fishing with me. At least I know he doesn't really know that I'm a crab. So he invited his grandson to go fishing and they had a great time. And he goes back and he tells his parents, hey, grandpa's great. What are you talking about that he's so mean? He was wonderful. And then he said, hey, grandson, why don't you come over? Let's plant some, plant some trees all along this, this road here. So they planted these wonderful trees all the way down the road. And they began to grow. And anyway, he started they started getting out a little bit of a reputation for being a nicer guy. So pretty soon he started inviting his sons. And next thing you know, you've got a really loving, tight, close family. But he got 20 more years of life. And then, of course, you know, about 100 years old. And then he died. But he had these trees that grew and lined the street on both sides. He went fishing galore, treated his kids really good for 20 years, and he died very loved. So that's a huge, big change. He changed everything just from a change in attitude. Uh, I don't know what he had to change his mind about, but he did, and he changed it, and he changed everything, and he was 80. And hey, Moses was 80 when he started doing his main job in, the, in this world. It's never too late, never, ever too late. So I want to tell you something. Today is a very special day for me because I'm announcing that I am now a, a, a woman. I'm in a women empowerment coach. So it's called Empower Her Life Coach. That's the name of my, my coaching business. And it starts, uh, well, technically today, but um, it's being worked on on my website. It's called Upscale. I'm sorry. Jeez, that's my other business. Uh, Angelasinspirations.com. And so if you want to set up a, a session, before my website is completely 
put together because they're putting down the account, uh, uh, the, the scheduling program that runs the whole thing. It's not quite up yet, but if you want to get a hold of me to schedule your, your session with me, um, you can do that. Just go to my email address. It's Angela's inspirations at gmail.com. So put an S on the end of each of those words, Angela's inspirations at gmail.com. And again, soon on my website, there's going to be um, the way you schedule it there. Okay. So just know that also too, um, beginning two weeks from tomorrow, today, today, no, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, every Sunday, I'm going to do a 10 o'clock um, little gathering, or it's probably going to be something that I will invite my husband to do with me, most likely, often anyway. And we're going to talk about more deep things, maybe some spiritual things. And I would love it if you would join us. Um, I'm going to call it a Patreon group. So you'll need to join my Patreon group, which is just like a special thing that I do once a week. So anyway, I might also put messages on there and added content and whatnot here and there. We'll just see how things go. But this is the beginning of something really great because I am now in service to the people that I love, that I want to serve. I'm so happy to serve you. I'm so happy to encourage you. My job is to uplift, encourage, empower women to speak out, to say what's not, uh, they not feel felt allowed to say and not allowed to stand up for themselves, speak and say what it is that they, they want to have to do, to feel, to experience, to be treated like, whatever it is that they are not doing well at saying, I'm here to help. And I'm telling you what, um, this is going to be right up my alley. I've, I've actually wanted to let you know that I'm a mother of three children and two stepdaughters, all very wonderful, all successful in their, in their own right. And I've also taught life skills for over 17 years and including right now at the Boise Rescue Mission. And um, I've written a book and I've co-authored four other books and some other music CDs from a previous marriage. And um, I produced a music CD and, and a Christmas album called Inspirations of Christmas. Can't tell I love that word inspiration, can you? Anyway, I am here to inspire you. Empower her, life coach, at your service and signing off. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you next time.